subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us among the people of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to do good to someone then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him towards Islam and Islam is the greatest blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nowadays we are in the end of the Hijjah the month of Hajj and the next month is the month of Muharram month of Muharram has a special greatness and excellence in our deen Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the month of Muharram is the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Shahrullahi al-Muharram so Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam declared that this month is a month of Allah as you know that when we associate anything with Allah then it becomes a special thing when we say that this is the house of Allah or when we say that this is the book of Allah when we say that this is a messenger of Allah so all these things they become special when we say that this is related with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the month of Muharram is the first month of Islamic calendar so when we welcome this month of Muharram we also realize that one of the years from Islamic calendar has finished completed and normally when we <coughs> do any business when we get involved in any trade or any kind of merchant transactions then we always estimate at the end of the year like we have financial year that in this financial year what I have earned and what I have lost what I have gained and what I have lost this is in normal every person who is a sensible responsible and he is conscious of his worldly benefits and gains at the end of the year he would estimate and he would realize that what he has done good and what he has done wrong likewise we also need to think about this that in this Islamic calendar year which is the lunar year what we have gained in terms of ibadah in terms of good deeds in terms of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what we have done have we been able to get closer to Allah or unfortunately the distance between us and Allah has increased 
Did we do something good or we have committed more sins? So we need to think about this. At the end of the year, we need to think about our good deeds. We need to think about our sins. We need to think about our future, which is the hereafter. Because every time, every day and every month and every year, when it is past, it means that this much time has decreased from our life, life scan, from our lifetime. This much time has decreased. So now we are more closer to our destiny. We are more closer to our destiny and our death. So we need to realize at this point of time when we are ending the Islamic lunar year, which is the Hijri calendar, and we are welcoming a new year. We also need to educate our children about this Islamic calendar, because nowadays all our schedule our dates, our appointments, and our timings, they are concerned with other calendar, not Islamic calendar. But as you know that there are many things in our deen which are related with this calendar. For example, the fasting during the month of Ramadan. Likewise, Hajj. So these two are the pillars of Islam. And they are the obligations. So if we don't know about our Islamic calendar, then how we can fulfill these obligations? And how we can... How we can... Uh, complete these obligations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not possible. So we have to make sure that we know our Islamic calendar and our children, they also know about Islamic calendar. The third thing which I want to say about this month is that this is a month which is a blessed month. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in Quran, إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إِثْنَ عَشَرَ شَهْرًا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمٌ From the day one, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this universe, there are 12 months. From the first day, there are 12 months. And among these 12 months, there are four months which are known as Ashurul Hurum. And this is what we say, sacred months. They have a special significance. They have an excellence, a greatness. And that's why I told you in the beginning that Prophet ﷺ said, that this is the month, the month of Muharram is a month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are four months which Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned in one hadith. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Minha arba'atun hurum. Dhul hijjah, dhul qa'da wa dhul hijjah wa Muharram. These are three months together, consecutive. One comes after another one. The first one is Zil Qa'da, the second one is Zil Hijjah, and the third one 
is Muharram. And the fourth month of uh, Ashur al-Hurum is Rajab. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran, فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ That you don't do anything wrong to yourself in these four months. Because these are special months. So does it mean that when these four months have passed, then we can do wrong to ourselves? No. Because they are special months, so we have to take extra care about this. We have to, we have to be more conscious and we have to be more careful about fulfilling the obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تَظْرِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ and the Meccan people, the Arabs, they were so conscious of these months of uh, Hurum, Ashur al Hurum, that if somebody finds anyone who was a killer of his father during these months, he was, he, he was not going to cause any harm to this killer of his father. And you know that these people, they were very famous for taking revenge and fighting against each other. And they were fighting for very small things for years and years. They were famous for that. But because of the sacredness of these months, if somebody finds anyone who is a killer, a murderer, they would let him go. They would not do anything wrong to him. When Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to Medina, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam found that the Jewish people, they were fasting on the 10th of Muharram. You know, 10th of Muharram is a special day. Prophet ﷺ questioned the Jewish people, why do you fast on this day? They said that this is the day, this is the day, a very great day, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave freedom to Prophet Musa alayhi salatu was salam from Pharaoh and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him drown Fir'aun and his people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to Prophet Musa alayhi salatu was salam and Musa alayhi salatu was salam being thankful to Allah, he fasted on this day. Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam said that if Musa السلام, was fasting on the 10th day because of this uh, victory and because of the help of Allah and being thankful to Allah. نَحْنُ أَحَقُّ وَأَوْلَى بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ We are more closer and we have the more right to follow Musa والسلام, So Prophet وسلم, he also fasted on the 10th of Muharram. And he encouraged other people. And this was the time when the obligation of fasting during the month of Ramadan was not prescribed. This, this uh, ruling about the fasting of Ram Ramadan, it was not revealed. Later it was revealed. So when later it was revealed, then Prophet wasallam left it to the people. If somebody wants to fast, then someone can fast. If somebody does not want to fast, then it is up to him. So it, it was not compulsory. But before the revelation of the ruling of fasting during the month of Ramadan, 
fasting on the 10th day of Muharram, it was like compulsory. It was like an obligation. So this is what we need to think about during this month. And Prophet ﷺ said, أَفْضَلُ الصِّيَامِ بَعْدَ رَمَضَانِ شَهْرِ اللَّهِ المحرم. That uh, the best fasting, the best fasting after the fasting of Ramadan is in the month of Muharram, which is the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. About this month of Muharram, unfortunately, a very tragic incident took place in the history of Islam, as you know, and that was the incident of Karbala. And you know that grandson of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hassan Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an, and all his uh, family, very brutally and wrongfully, some people, they claim to be Muslims, they killed them. And they were actually the enemies of Islam. They were the enemies of Islam and they were the enemies of the family of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because of these incidents, some people they think that the month of Muharram is a sacred month because of these incidents. That is a wrong conception. Because what Prophet Sallallahu told us and the things which happened in this month and on the basis of which Prophet Sallallahu said that this is the first month of Islamic calendar and it is a great month. So all these things happen before the incidents of Karbala. Of course, it is a grievous and very sad incidents which took place in Islamic history. And no way we accept this. <coughs> but we do say that this thing happened it was a qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the month of Muharram and the sacredness of this month was much earlier and much before than this thing happened. And the other thing which is also related with this month because of, the month, because of these incidents of Karbala, unfortunately, some people they say that we are Muslims, they say that we are the followers of Prophet Wasallam, and we believe in Allah and we believe in Quran and we believe in the Day of Judgment. At the same time, they do certain things during this month which we do not find in the three generations of our Islamic history. You know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was questioned that who are the best people? Who are the best people? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, خَيْرُ الْقُرُونَ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ That the best people are those people who are my companions. And then the followers of the companions. And then the followers of the followers of the companions. So these are three generations. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave a shahada, a testimony that these are the best people. So when we look at the lives of these people, we don't find such things which we find nowadays during the month of Muharram and people they say oh this is because of our love for the Ahlul Bayt and this is because of our love for Islam and this and that 
So all this is something new. It is not related with our deen. You know, our deen tells us about patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ That we will test you. We will test you with loss of your lives, loss of your money, your property, your wealth, and other things. We will test you. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ and those people who remain patient, give them the glad tiding. Who are the patient? Who remains patient when they are tested with the loss of their lives and property and wealth and everything? When any calamity or any trouble any hardship, any affliction, it comes to them, then what they say? Inna lillah, we belong to Allah, wa inna ilayhi raji'oon, and we will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not the way what we see among the people who say that we are the lovers of Hussein alayhi salam, and we are from the group of Ali radiallahu ta'ala an and this and that, we don't see in those predecessors, the three generations about which Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that they are the best people. And if you want to follow, you follow these three generations. We don't see these things with them. And what we see today, it is not from Islam. It is not from Islam. Because in Islam, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not allow for mourning. When somebody has passed away, then you raise your voice and you beat yourself and you do other things and you show impatience. All these things are un-Islamic. Un-Islamic. And there are many ahadiths we cannot go into the details, but you can find many evidence in the books of Hadith that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forbade from all these things. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that these are the acts of Jahiliyyah. These are the acts of Jahiliyyah. And also related with this month, we see that certain people, because of this incidence of Karbala and because of this uh, uh, school of thought, unfortunately, they criticize companions of Prophet ﷺ. Not only they criticize them, they divide the Muslim Ummah on the basis of this and they say, that na'udhu billahi min thalik, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an, and Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, and Uthman, and all other companions of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa There were only three people who remained Muslims. Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, Abu Dhar Ghifari, and Salman Farsi. And apart from them, al-ayadhu billah, everyone turned away from Islam. What kind of deen is this? So it means that Prophet Sallallahu for 23 years, what he did and he preached and he spent his life and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave this testimony in Quran that لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ امْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِلتَّقْوَى All these ayahs are in Quran. Allah said that I have tested their 
heart. I have examined their heart. I have found that these are true people and I am happy with them and they are happy with me. I am pleased with them and they are pleased with me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you want to become Muslims, then you be like them. All these are in Quran. And somebody would say, no, no, they turn away from Islam. This is not Islam. So my brothers, we need to be very careful. We should not listen to everyone who talks about Islam. And if you listen to anyone, then you have to make sure that what is he saying and whether does he have any evidence from Quran and Sunnah or not? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed this book and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that if you have any dispute, then return it to Allah. وَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ That you have, if you have any dispute, then you return it to Allah and His Messenger, if you are believers. So no matter whatsoever somebody is saying, you have a scale, and this scale is Quran and the Sunnah. The book of Allah and the sayings of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And let me tell you one thing more important. Even somebody would say to you, oh, this Quran is sufficient for us. No, you cannot understand Quran without the help of Sunnah. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He revealed this Quran to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he also made him responsible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ لِتَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِمَا أَرَاكَ اللَّهِ So unless you do not learn Quran with the help of Sunnah, you will never, you will never be on the straight path. You will go straight. So please, this is the scale, this is the criterion, and this is the mayor. Everything you can put on this and you can find whether this is right or wrong. If it is right in terms of Quran and Sunnah, Alhamdulillah, follow it. And that's why Prophet Sallallahu said, Taraktu fikum amarain. لَن تَظِلُّ مَا تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِمَا كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّتِي Oh my people, I have left, left two things with you. As long as you are following these two things, you will never go astray. Nobody can misguide you. But if you leave these two things, either Quran or Sunnah, then anybody can misguide you. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can understand the greatness and the significance of this month. And we also fast on this day, which is the 10th day of Muharram, because this is the sunnah. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Inni ahtasibu ala Allah an yukaffira as-sanata allati qabla. I hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if I fast on this day, one day, which is the 10th day of Muharram, then because of this one day fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will forgive your previous year. All the sins of the previous year. And also, which we need to remember, Prophet sallallahu when he was told about this, that this is the day when the Jewish people, they fast and they glorify this day. Prophet sallallahu said that next year, if I remain, if I, I, if I am alive, then I will fast on the ninth day and the tenth day. So that is the best way. Or you can fast on the tenth day and eleventh day as well. 
So inshallah, uh, during this first uh, month of Muharram, which is the first month of Islamic calendar, we will fast on the 10th of Muharram and on the 9th of Muharram, following the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also we will renew our love with the companions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we make sure that we don't say anything about the companions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you love them, man ahabbahum, fabihubbi ahabbahum, wa man abghadahum fabibughdi abghadahum. If anybody loves my companions, then he loves them because of myself, because of my love. And if anybody haters my companions and dislikes them, then it is because of myself. And Prophet ﷺ also said, لا تسبوا أصحابي Do not say abusive words about my companions. لو أن أحدكم أنفق مثل أحد ذهبا ما بلغ مد أحدهم ولا نصيفة You know, the sacrifices which the companions of Prophet ﷺ, they have offered, they offered everything for the sake of Allah. You know about Umar radiallahu anhu, you know about Abu Bakr, you know when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked for the donations, he did not leave even a single thing in his house. And when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, what did, you le- what did you leave at house? He said, nothing other than the love of Allah and his messenger. I did not leave anything. So now these people and these companions and somebody who doesn't, know, who doesn't know anything about Islam, he is being a judge and he is saying that he did this and he did that. So it is ignorance. So we need to correct our aqidah. And this is a part of aqidah. Imam Tahawi, rahimahullah, and Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, in aqidah al-wastiyah, and Imam Tahawi in aqidah tahawiyah they have written specifically on this particular issue that if your heart is not clean, if your chest is not clean and if your tongue is not safe and the Sahaba and the companions, they are not safe from your hatredness and from your dislike, then you are not a Muslim. You are not a Muslim. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ilil muslimin.